Hi guys, this is Kumar here and it, this is the demo session for performance testing using LoadRunner. The version of LoadRunner that is used for this course is 12.5. That's the latest version. This demo session is brought to you by softwaretestinghelp.org. Well, the instructor for this course, Kumar Gupta, and that's me. A little bit about myself, my education. I got a master's degree from United States back in 2004. Right now, I'm an independent performance testing consultant and a corporate trainer as well. I do majorly the corporate training for Infosys, Mindtree, IBM. Along with that, I do a lot of trainings outside as well. My working history, I've started my career in software testing back in 2004 and all these 13 years of experience it's completely in software testing during this long span i've done manual testing both back-end testing and the, as well as the functional testing automation testing using rft and qtp and majorly performance testing my performance testing experience is in load runner performance center storm runner load jmeter and oracle application testing suite i've used all these applications all these tools over this period of five to six years and uh, as far as my training experience is concerned i've been doing it from last five years but from the last two to three years i've been exclusively doing trainings but nothing else i've during this uh, period i have handled more than 100 batches both classroom trainings as well as online trainings or VCR sessions is what we call it as. And the classroom trainings have handled as big as more than 200 students and as low as even five to 10 students. Well, coming back to the course. So who, who is this course for? Uh, well, I would say this is perfect for beginners who doesn't have any knowledge in software or any knowledge uh, in any of the testing fields, this is perfect for them, as well as the experienced professionals as well, uh, who have done manual testing or automation or maybe business analyst. They want to move into performance testing area. It is perfect for them. And if you're wondering, uh, well, I have six to seven years of manual testing experience. Is this the right time to move into performance testing? Well, the answer for that question is yes. I have done it myself. After five, five years of both automation and manual testing, uh, I moved into performance testing. Uh, well, it, it always fascinated me, this performance testing, because it's one of the most sought, out, uh, sought after testing field. So I always wanted to do it, and then uh, I happened to get into that project. As I've told you, this course is best for developers or business analysts or even managers who wants to manage the show and have to have the knowledge of these tools as to how it works, definitely for them. Why should I make this performance testing as my career? Well, uh, as I've told you before, it's a most sought after testing field. Whether you are a manual tester or an automation tester, people want to be here. I mean, not all, but some of them. And uh, one more thing is, uh, it requires a little bit of coding knowledge, little bit of analytical skills, so it has a lot to do uh, with your skill set, but it's not tedious. And when I said, uh, if it's a manual testing or you're a manual tester or a functional tester, there's a lot of work, honestly speaking, and it's a redundant work or a mundane work. I've started my career as a manual tester. So it is exi exciting for the first three to four months. And after that, uh, it becomes little mundane. I mean, little routine. You'll be doing the same stuff all the time and it and really gets onto your nerves. So uh, if I remember uh, starting of my career, I just had to know only the word Excel and quality center. That's what they used to call it back then. Now they are calling it as ALM. Few set of SQL queries and Unix commands. And I did it almost like day in, day out. I did it for a really long time. And it really got boring after a particular point of time. There is a lot of work, but it's the same work and there is nothing exciting to uh, look forward to or nothing excited to learn. But performance testing is exactly opposite. 
there is not as much work as manual tester which means that you are not swamped with uh, work all the time but it is little challenging work and every day there is something new to learn well you might have to coordinate or deal with lot of people uh, like network administrators uh, server administrators developers uh, database administrators uh, project managers dev managers you have to deal with lot of people to uh, get the work done or to get a better understanding of your project or your uh, application under test so every day you deal with all these people which means that you have a wonderful opportunity to learn all the components which are there in the software industry uh, there is something called bottleneck analysis that you have to do and nobody is forcing you to do that but at the same time uh, it's 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 a job of all these people like database guys developers network administrators and yourself so when you work together to to identify these bottlenecks you will learn quite some stuff so this is what always excites me uh, when i think of performance testing when it comes to pay package well uh, that's the end of the day that's what we all talk about right i'll tell you what i am aware of and uh, you can do your research using nowcree.com or monster uh, you do your math or you do your little bit of research as far as i know uh, when i came back to india back in 2011 12 if i remember correctly a performance tester used to get close to 70 to 80 dollars per hour that's what he can charge and i was a manual tester with of automation knowledge i could i used to get close to what 50 dollars and sometimes 55 dollars and that too uh, after a lot of uh, research and a lot of hunting out for the jobs so that's the numbers that we are talking about almost 50 to 60 percent more or even more than that and in india Uh, well definitely what you get is more than an automation engineer or a manual tester what i heard and what i used to get the experience multiplied by 2 or 1.5 is what you get for example you have 6 years of experience depending upon your negotiating skills and uh, how much uh, you look out for jobs you might get anything close to 6 multiplied by 1.5 so which means that anywhere from 10 lakhs to 12 lakhs is what you can get or even more so again these numbers uh, you do your research uh, from those websites and you'll get an idea and there are a lot of opportunities out there i wouldn't say lot of but there are opportunities out there but the most important thing is there are not many too many performance testers uh, there are a lot of manual testers because the work itself is not challenging and anybody can learn and anybody can do but performance testing is not like that you have to learn it and then even working is also a little challenging when it comes to scripting and analysis so few jobs but very few people syllabus well the syllabus for this course has been designed to meet the industry needs i worked as i've told you i worked in the industry in the performance testing industry for more than 5 years taken up different positions leads managers so i exactly understand what a performance tester needs so based on that experience i have designed the course and uh, it is suitable the course is designed in such a way that it's suitable for both completely novice or no experienced guys and experienced guys as well and the way the course my course works is a lot of hands on goes on so i explain the topic especially when it comes to tool and i explain it topic demonstrate it for you and i'll give you some time even though it's an online course i give you some time so that you can practice it and you have issues you can talk to me right away to get it solved i came out with this kind of arrangement because when i started off i just used to do the sessions and expect them to practice but they came back to me with a lot of questions and they say that when i explain it becomes simple but when they are doing it they are getting into a lot of issues so i figured out that's the best way to do it in the class itself get it resolved and always remember issues are good when you get issues that's when you learn more about the tool 
and uh, my sessions are completely full deep play to play questions uh, sessions which means that a lot of uh, talking goes on between the students as well as me so it's two way communication it's not just one way so this is the course objective why we have to do performance testing what is performance testing and most importantly the performance testing life cycle every single testing field has a life cycle and so is performance testing so security testing has a life cycle manual testing has a life cycle automation has its own life cycle so is performance testing and uh, non functional requirement gathering so requirement gathering is important for any set testing and similarly it's important for performance testing as well so what is that we gather as a part of performance testing i'll clearly explain and uh, if you and the templates will be provided for you to gather that information if all that information that i've told you is gathered uh, you never have to go back to the client again to get any more information and we also understand how to successfully execute a performance testing project and uh, the load runner or the complete architecture of load runner load runner it's not just a single tool it it has multiple components like load generators controller vu gen analysis so how these components interact with each other and how they interact with your application and the test and how do i use these components completely will be explained in the class in these sessions and finally the bottleneck identification what is bottleneck and how it will harm your system and as a performance tester what is my role for identification of the bottleneck something that you will understand well let's start with few of the topics that i've told you why performance testing you can see that guy banging on the keyboard that's exactly why well he's pissed off he's pissed off because he has been trying to book a ticket on one of his movie booking websites maybe a book my show or something like that and he has to wait for 15 minutes to figure out that there are no seats available the application is so slow and is so pissed off so it's pissed off for not because the seats are not available but because the application has took so long to show him that there are no seats available so if the applications are slow the end customers the end users are move away from those applications because these days the customers or the end users have lot of opportunities or lot of uh, scope outside it's not just your website there are so many websites available so if not amazon they have flipkart if not flipkart they have snapdeal if not book my show they have ticket dada so there is always options available for end users and you don't want as a website owner you don't want your end customer to move away from your website just because the website is slow so this is the precise reason why performance testing is done on your applications and even bad if this particular page is found so you entered your credit card details click on pay button and imagine this page is displayed for your end users he will he will never come back to your website so to get rid of these problems it's better we have these applications get get performance tested or uh, probably 10 to 15 years back i don't think nobody even knew what is performance testing and slowly pe people started doing performance testing from last 12 or 13 years or maybe yeah 10 years and uh, from last 4 to 5 years almost every single website or every single application web application they are getting their applications performance tested because now the customer satisfaction and the customer experience is very very important for these companies so they do everything possible to make these end users happy so that they can come back to these websites again and again first let's try to understand why these applications actually become slow very very simple guys 
if the load on the application increases. When I said load, let's take a Gmail application. So at this point of time, right now, while I'm recording this demo session, it is 340 IST. At this point of time, it's not one person who will be using this Gmail, but there are multiple people who will be using this Gmail application. So these users, we call them as concurrent users. And when the concurrent users increases, the number of concurrency increases, the load on the application increases. And it is a universal rule, guys. When, when the load on something increases, the performance of that particular thing decreases. You can take anything in the world. Let's take a bike. If it can handle two users, and now, uh, I mean, I said two users, two people, if it can carry two people. And now there's a third person coming and sitting on the bike. Definitely the performance of the bike decreases. Same thing happens with every single thing in the world. So same is with the servers or same is with the application. When the load increases, the performance of that particular application decreases, which means that it becomes slow. And when it becomes slow, the end user is not happy. So... This is how the application uh, becomes slow. So when we do performance testing or as a part of performance testing, we make sure that even though the load increases, the performance is not deteriorating or if the deterioration happens, it is under the acceptable limits. That's what we do as performance testers. But one thing you have to keep in mind, guys, as a performance tester, you cannot make the applications faster. You can only do the testing and tell to the developer saying that this application is slow. And you can also identify the root cause or identify the problematic area because of which the application is slow. Now it is up to the developers or the performance engineers to make necessary changes to your application and make it faster. So if you are under the impression that performance testers will make the application fast, then it is incorrect. You only identify the problems if it is slow or if it is fast, you just let them know that it is fast. That's what your responsibility. Now, what is performance testing? Well, let's, let's assume our application under test is Gmail application. So we can have this Gmail application used by multiple users. In the picture, even though it's five users, but in the real world, it's thousands of users. And as I've told you, we call this as concurrent users. And when concurrent users are using the application, typically the application becomes slow. So you can have this concurrent users use this application. By doing this, you're creating the load on the application. And when the load is created, you check for the performance of this application, whether it is slow or fast. Well, if it is slow, then you have an additional responsibility to identify what, why it is slow. But again, to identify why it is slow, it's not your job. It's the job uh, of all the people together, like developers, performance testers, performance engineers, server admins, database admins, network administrators. They work together to identify this problem. Well, you can have overall idea as to what all the industry tools which are out there and what are the protocols it supports. Right away, you know that the load runner is the winner, guys. It kind of supports every single protocol which is out there. So no wonder a lot of people prefer load, load runner. It actually captures 70 to 80% of the market, which means it's huge. So if there is a performance testing project happening, let's say there are 100 performance testing projects happening out there, 70 to 80 of them are being used by load runner. So that is a huge number. And that is the reason why if you're learning performance testing, it's better you start with load runner. Then there are other tools as well. Uh, Jmeter is an open source tool, but everything else that you see over here, you have to pay for that. Loadrunner is a clear winner, but it's kind of expensive as well. But you need not have to worry about it. Your company will pay, pay for that. When we do performance testing, what are our objectives? Well, our objective is not to find the defects or the bugs. 
if you have done manual testing you have you are aware of this word defects or the bug which is the deviation from your requirement so identifying bugs or defects is not our responsibility it is the manual tester's job responsibility but for us we have to identify the bottlenecks the bottlenecks is the pain points as i've told you or the problematic area or the slowest part of your application which is causing the performance issues so that's what it is and you also have to check the functionality in the real world conditions when thousand people are using it how does your application work so that's what you do with performance testing as well and uh, in my course i'll give a very very good background about architecture what are the different types of architectures and why we need to understand architecture for being a performance tester and uh, different kinds of architectures so that the application under test that you might be getting into or that you might have to do performance testing can follow one of those architectures that i'll be talking about and by the way for bottleneck identification understanding architecture is very very important guys performance testing life cycle will be detailedly discussed so there are different stages each stage what is the output who all the people who are involved and as a performance tester when do you get involved or a performance testing lead what are your responsibilities and when do you get involved and as a performance testing manager what are your responsibilities and when do you get involved or which stage you get involved will be detailedly covered also we'll discuss about types of performance testing there are five types we'll discuss all of them in detail so it's not just execution of one type of performance test we have to do five of them and which of them are mandatory which of them are optional and why we need to run all of them we'll clearly understand but the most popular among those five is load testing and why we have to do this load testing is to make sure that once your application goes into production the performance of that application is good or at least there are no performance issues for that so this is a very 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 important test and this is a mandatory test which we do at the starting of each and every cycle however we'll discuss about this in detail uh, when we get started nfr gathering nfr is non functional requirement gathering since performance testing falls under non functional testing the requirements we gather for this performance testing is obviously non functional requirements so what all the details that you have to cover the one challenge that i have faced here is guys the clients that you work with most of them have never worked on performance testing projects or some of them would have worked but they don't have enough experience so as a part of requirements they don't even know what to give to you so as a performance tester first you have to have a complete clarity as to what you have to collect even before you start your performance testing and that's what will be covered as a part of this course work and once you clear you you have to guide these clients telling them that this is the kind of information you need and this is why you need this information and only you get all this information then you can do your performance testing 100% otherwise the results that you get is not close to production which means that they are not good results and all your efforts and the budget that you are given for performance testing is as good as waste so you have to educate them and you have to grab all this information from them we also discuss about workload modeling in my course lot of people have difficulty in doing this workload modeling there is something called pacing and think time we clearly understand the difference of both of them and also will calculate the pacing and number of concurrent users using workload modeling i've seen people who have been working for 5 to 6 years in this performance testing field but not comfortable doing workload modeling if you know how to do this definitely you will be an asset to your class or your team and finally uh i'll cover bottleneck analysis uh this is one of the challenging area 
when it comes to performance testers i have seen lot of people in my career that they become really comfortable in scripting and execution over a period of time like couple of years they are totally com- comfortable but when it comes to analysis they are not comfortable so more and more analysis you do then uh, you become uh, such an important uh, part of your team that will make you a special performance tester and uh, definitely this bottleneck analysis is not something which can be taught in a day or a month or something like that but i'll give you with all the tools that you need so that you can get started but once you get started you can keep learning it from the developers and admins the database admins network admins server admins you can continuously learn and more and more analysis you do more and more fun it will be and uh, definitely the the respect that you command in the team will improve many folds and there is a sample case study that i will come up with when it comes to performance bottlenecks that's what you can have a clear understanding as to what it is and also i come out with some problem statements i expect you to identify the bottlenecks for those problem statements so you get a feel for what you have to do when you get into the project well when the whole course is done a sample project will be given to you this will be on our home grown application so the application is given to you and all the concepts that i have covered in that course you have to use those concepts and complete the project and you have exactly 7 days to complete the project and after 7 days once the project has been submitted to you i will evaluate it and 60% is a pass mark that's when you can get your course completion certificate and the key will be revealed after that and i'm sure if you have done this a uh, project successfully i i can say you are industry ready finally there will be a session which could be completely allocated for interviews and resume preparation i have done lot of interviews myself so i know what kind of questions the people will ask you when you go to the interviews so most of the interview questions i will try to cover in this session and as the course goes on i'll try to cover when and where the topic comes but again if i miss out something there is a special session for this and i'll give you some guidelines for the resume preparation as well so this is the end of our end of my demo session see you in class guys bye bye